I don't know what happened. I was supposed to take her to the Fireflies and walk away. You go halfway across the country with someone. Her immunity to mean something. Maybe I was starting to buy into that old cure business. Maybe I just wanted to do right by her. The only catch. It would kill her. Jesus Christ, Joe. What do you do? This might be the hardest review I've ever had to write. I've always regarded 2013's The Last of Us as my all time favorite game. Fast forward seven years to 2020, I've just beat The Last of Us Part 2, and yet somehow, despite yet another exquisite lesson in storytelling, 2013's The Last of Us is still my favourite game. Let me be clear, this isn't to say that Part 2 isn't an outstanding achievement, both technically and narratively, but it's left me feeling numb and off balance, which I firmly believe is Naughty Dog's sole intention. So they just get to get away with this? Nobody wants that. Yeah, but that's what's happening. Set five years after the beginning of the first game, The Last of Us Part 2 sees you taking control of a now 19-year-old Ellie as she embarks on a path of destruction and death after a traumatic event happens to her and the town of Jackson. This is a tale of misery, and Naughty Dog doesn't let you forget that. The pacing and the tone are always downbeat, ensuring you are constantly in shock and questioning every violent act the characters perform. There's no point during this game's story where I felt hopeful or happy, but to count that as a negative would be a disservice. I reveled in the misery, enjoying the experience of each and every twist and turn, even if they were making me very uncomfortable. It's worth mentioning, I can't go into why this is the case without very heavily spoiling the game. It's something you can only understand after playing the game through. <laughs> As always with Naughty Dog, the story is told with a huge level of expertise. The game is very carefully written so that events only make sense when they need to. The cast performance is just as stellar as we've come to expect, and Neil Druckmann's direction reaches a new level of masterful. The game's environments and atmosphere are haunting and beautifully mesmerizing at the same time, and the gorgeous soundtrack adds the final piece to this incredibly complex puzzle. The game is a technical marvel in terms of character models, animations, environments, contextual interactions and sound design, and in terms of moment to moment gameplay, we're looking at Naughty Dog's best game yet. Combat is fluid and dynamic, and every encounter is challenging and fresh. I don't think there was a combat encounter where I felt confident I could make it through unscathed, and although I spent most of my time avoiding enemies where possible, I still always felt like I got through an area only by the skin of my teeth. There's a huge amount of tension and atmosphere the game creates, so much so I was often reluctant to progress out of fear of what I might find around the next corner. <laughs> the Last of Us Part 2 has a cast of incredible characters, many of which new additions joining the crew we've already grown to love from the first game. Ellie's friends and companions are all a delight to watch, and there's a group of villains that you also learn to love, despite knowing the terrible actions they've taken part in. On top of the main cast, however, there's an entire B cast of named characters in the fact that every NPC and enemy has a name, adding a newfound sense of depth and life to the world. When taking down a group of enemies, the bad guys will call out their friends' names when they die before drowning on their own blood after a shotgun shell to the stomach. This doesn't seem like much, but somehow it makes me feel for every enemy I killed, and the incredible facial animations of enemies choking out or straining during a fist fight add a 10 ton weight to the already incredibly heavy realism. <laughs> There are a few times where the game leads itself astray, however. Nothing major, there are a few gameplay sections and encounters that go on far longer than needed. And the addition of many of the new infected classes feels a bit too gamey for what is supposed to be something a bit more grounded. These moments don't take a huge amount away from the experience, but they were the few times I was pulled out of the immersion and found myself tutting at what I was being presented with. <laughs> The Last of Us Part 2 absolutely needs to be experienced to be understood. 
There are so many personal heartfelt moments, so many deep and dark story twists, and so many incredibly exciting set pieces that I just couldn't explain it in written format. As a game, I've never seen anything like it. The level of combat realism is unprecedented, the level of tension felt and the sheer amount of oh my god moments alone should be reason enough to class this as one of the best games of all time. But it's the story, and the way the story makes you feel, that really pushes The Last of Us into a caliber of its own. I've never felt so elated, satisfied, uncomfortable and disappointed at the same time before, in any medium. However, for reasons I just can't explain, I can't say I prefer this game over the first. The word perfect may be a bit strong, but to call The Last of Us Part 2 a masterpiece, well, that seems just about right.